I will have a good show. I will not have a million technical problems. I will. Oh, oh, hi, everyone. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Comic Base Live Stream. Uh, I'm Pete Bickford. I'm your host. Uh, welcome to the best produced you know, show on the entire internet. Uh, that's, that's definitely what we're going for today. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about, of all things, Windows. Um, so if you came just for comic based stuff, um, you know, you'll, you'll probably just wind up learning a lot of extra stuff about, uh, you know, the computer it's running on instead. But um, what inspired this show is basically just tech support calls uh, we've taken from when we need to uh, help out someone on and uh, we remote onto their machine and, you know, share screens with them and everything and just what kind of problems they've been having. And you see the steps that they've got going on their own machines and it's like, well, okay we could make this better. Um, you don't want to change too much stuff on other people's computers, but here's the show where I try to convince you that maybe there's some built-in things in windows that you might want to change to make your own life just suck less. Uh, let me see if I can move my camera ever so slightly this way. And yeah, sorry about that. Like I say, the best produced show on the internet. Anyway, so uh, with us today, uh, by the way, is our moderator, Mr. Gregory Hack is in the house. Mike Beam is first in the chat uh, out here in Vancouver, Washington. Looks like Looks like weather generally is picking up for people across the country. A little rainy out in places. Uh, Rob Weinberg out here from Toledo, Jet City Comics, or a Viejo from the wet, wet uh, you know, Midlands of, of Minneapolis. Agent de Camp from North Florida. Overcast is seventy-five. I'll take it. Uh, also, he wants to remind everyone: please smash the like button, everyone. Oh, and also. Please, if you would, um, if you could uh, uh, hit the like button uh, on the on the stream, if you're on YouTube at all, and if you could leave just even a brief comment, especially in the first few minutes of the show, it apparently seems to make quite a difference in terms of whether or not the show gets recommended to people. So please do, uh, even if it's just something like Pete. Your hair, it looks amazing. Yeah, wh whatever it is. Uh, but anyway, uh, please uh, uh, send a short, uh, short note, please. All right. Uh, anyway, so let's see what we got going on here. Uh, subtle, yeah, okay. We're the Windows jokes have already begun. All right, uh, let me see what else we got going on. Oh, uh, Jeff Wilkie's out here from Maple Valley, Washington. Wet as ever, excellent. All right, let me just wake up my other computer here so it doesn't distract me with a screensaver and we'll push on to things. Before we th do though, uh, I have a couple of very quick announcements. Uh, number one, I've just booked my uh, tickets to Comic-Con. Uh, I'll be out there in San Diego for the first few days of the show. If any of you guys want to get together, well, well honestly, I'll, I'll see if maybe we can arrange some kind of meetup type thing. And as always, if you are on the comic base leaderboard of the top 200 contributors, drinks are on me. Uh, anytime, just come on up and we'll go grab a beer. Um, but I'm happy to catch at least the first part of the show. Uh, my wife, uh, uh, the the lovely and illustrious Carolyn, uh, is uh, is going to be attending, or I should say, dragging me to her high school reunion, and so uh, that should be fun. Never been to one of those before, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, my only reference for high school reunions really is Gross Point Blank, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but uh, in return, I get to drag uh, her to Comic Con, so uh, you know the, the trip should work out. So it uh, should be an eventful time. Uh, anyway, other things are happening. Um, I presently, uh, we are at war like most other people with the, uh, uh, the internet on mail. Uh, apparently Google Comcast AOL, uh, and, uh, what was the other one? Uh, Yahoo all decided over a fairly short period of time that they were going to, uh, they were going to finally stamp down on, on spam or whatever else and they did that by slamming down uh, controls on all mail sent to their servers such that if it doesn't if it isn't signed 17 different ways uh, demarked decammed spf'd uh you know, tls you know and so forth with very very specific things that apparently even though we seem to match on everything uh they're still having trouble um we're getting just incredible numbers of bounces back when trying to send two mails through those systems which is really a shame because one of the things that we're trying to tell people about by the way is they were holding a really great sale uh for uh we we hit one and a quarter million comics in comic base so uh i'll just tell you all right now if your uh, subscription is anywhere near uh, expiring, or if you'd like to upgrade to uh, like our amazing archive edition with the, you know, get the over a million covers that come with that one, uh, now is a great time to do it. Head on over to our site, comicbase.com, and have a look around. Uh, you'll see it right on the top of the news page, uh, notes on the sale. But unfortunately, we've been really unable to get people to, uh, or at least a lot of people, uh, get the message out over mail. We, we've actually taken the extraordinary step of hiring a consultant to tell us uh, as best as they can why 
mail is getting rejected at such amazing levels through all those systems, even though we seem to have everything in place uh, and all the automated tools say it's all in place. But uh, uh, even the consultants are saying, yeah, we'll have to get back to you because every person on the internet right now is not getting mail through any of those systems. And so we're really backed up. So that's going well. Uh, so that's a thing we're dealing with. It will get sorted out in the end, but just so you know, that's uh, the emails delivered to those servers uh, services is kind of touch and go right now. Uh, other things that are kind of touch and go right now is uh, SMS messaging. Uh, we're working with that again, another fabulous government regulations have slammed down in order to uh, save us all from the horrors of, of uh, spam techs. And what they're really doing is, is stopping um, uh, messages about oh, things like Atomic Avenue orders from being delivered. Uh, we're working through that one as well. But yeah, I basically spent my week just kind of dealing with the bureaucracy, which is fabulous. You know, I, you know, if you ever want to just fight like crazy just to get back to zero, that's 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 the kind of week you want. But anyway, moving on. Um, all right. So, uh, like I say, uh, last one, uh, did want to give people a big reminder on the sale. Uh, it is, we are going to close up shop on that one. Uh, officially, I think it ends tomorrow or it might even end tonight at midnight. We'll probably extend it a day or so just because it's been so weird with me email, but, uh, but do not delay if you are in the market for current base. Cause you know, like I say, you can save a bunch of money. And that's always a good thing. We're in favor of that. All right. So let's move on to the topic du jour. Uh, oh, let me see here. Um, Okay. All right. So yeah, Brian Stewart says, I did see your latest uh, copy of uh, 1.25 million email a day. So at least it made through the Iron Dome defenses. Well, thank God for that. Um, <laughs> and, and a couple other people say they've, they've gotten um, uh, they've gotten some emails through. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's just, like I say, it's, it's shocking because we usually try to maintain a really clean list. You know, people say, oh, want our mail, man, we take you off in a minute. And so we, we normally don't see a lot of bounces. And we, we saw the bounce list from when we were sending these ones out. We we're like, whoa, <laughs> it's like, like half the internet is off limits to us right now. So, okay, well, we're working on it. Um, all right, so let's talk about Windows if we can. All right, so this, if you guys just installed, you know, a brand new Windows PC, uh, Windows 11 is, is the flavor of the month these days. It, it would look something like this when you get it going. Uh, let's assume that the very first thing you did after installing it is the very rational part of installing Comic Base. So you've got that icon on your desktop. But other than that, you've got something that looks pretty much like this when you start. And what I would like to suggest, and, and I'm going to try not to get too strident about a lot of this stuff, which I think is going to be about half my battle, uh, is, is to make it so that I don't come off as that horrific know-it-all tech support guy. And, and I really want to lead you guys through not only why you might want to change these things, where the settings are and so forth, but also just, you know, look, just give you my perspective of what the good and the bad is of things and then make up your own mind. Uh, but the truth is there are a lot of things uh, about the way that Windows comes just out of the box that are, you know, kind of great for Windows and Microsoft, maybe not so wonderful for most users. Now, one thing I should note is uh, this right now is Windows 11 Pro. It might vary slightly from the home version. One of the very first things uh, I will say is uh, it, it, there are some interface features that if you have the Pro version, they don't dumb it down with the same defaults they use for the home version. Uh, it's funny, I haven't seen any official discussion on this one, but I did notice because I actually went to the trouble of actually resetting this entire PC prior to showtime. You know, the things I will do for you guys. Um, so this thing is basically, you know, other than having Counterbase installed is basically, you know, fresh out of the box and did just so we could, uh, you know, start from scratch and be on the same page and show what the thinking was on this one. But uh, these the things that come out of home are actually a little bit more dumbed down than things in pro. So if your stuff is a little different, eh, that would be why. But uh, let's start with the basics. When you first start your PC up, and unfortunately, I couldn't show you this part, otherwise we never would be ready to run this thing in time for showtime. Uh, it's going to lead you through, uh, a, a, they, they call them wizards, right? That's a, a name dating back from about the wizard, uh, the Windows 95 days. But a series of modal dialogues, which basically says, oh, hey, here is some stuff that you might, you know, we want to encourage you to set the setting one way or another. And there's about five of them that you're going to go through just when you, boot up your PC for the first time. Uh, and some of those ones, I'm going to say, you maybe don't want to take the default settings on. I'm just going to more or less talk those over. Uh, some of them will be about things like privacy and about device usage. And I can't show you the wizard, but I can show you where those settings exist later on. So let's, let's start with privacy. 
And by the way, a lot of what I'm going to do here, and, and this is just a trick in its own right, is I'm, I don't go and try to memorize where they've hidden a lot of these settings anymore, you know, like, because they're all 17 dialogues down under settings or or something similar. Uh, but one of your best tips you could ever have is anytime you're just looking for stuff in Windows, just click on the Windows uh, dialog right now and just start typing. And so if I type privacy, privacy, like that, uh, it's going to immediately offer you suggestions that 99 times out of 100 are just going to be the right place. So you don't need to remember where all this stuff is is in the twisty little maze of, of dialogues all alike. Just start typing and you're probably going to find it. But let's go to the privacy settings in Windows and let's talk about some of the ones that, that came there one way and that maybe you don't want. All right. So uh, one of them, uh, let's start right at the top here. Uh, let apps show me personalized ads by using my advertising ID. Uh, if you've got that on, well, all right. So what the heck is a private an advertising ID? Well, Microsoft doesn't want to tell people that this is Pete Bickford, you know, or whoever signs into this account. They don't want to tell advertisers it's Pete Bickford is using this thing. They'll say user number X two four seven eight. 309 you know j you know they're going to make up some kind of id number for me on the on the whole thing and what they're doing there is essentially what a tracking cookie does is there if you have that turned on is they're allowing advertisers you know people who've paid them money to say oh well user x you know, x27114 j you know uh you know clicked on uh, the uh, candy crush game so maybe you know you want to sell him more casual games or something uh, they might you know uh, t uh let you know let people know that that uh i I've, I've launched office or things like that uh in general you know it depends on your theory on advertising um i don't generally mind people you know showing me ads about things i care about but honestly, I've got a big kind of a creepy factor going on with big tech stuff in general right now where honestly, I don't want them to show me anything, period. And if that's not an option, I want them to know as little about me as possible. So, um, you know, preference number one, no, just don't show me any ads at all. Uh, but if you can't manage that, um, you know what? I'll take your irrelevant ads as long as you don't get information about me. That is my personal preference. So I always turn this kind of stuff off. Um, and let's all go down the other things. Let websites show me locally relevant content by accessing my language list. Well, okay. Uh, my choice there really comes down to, do I want to have people show me ads in English or do I want to let them show me ads in, you know, Swahili or Chinese or whatever else? I guess if you got to show me stuff, English would be the best. So I'm going to leave that one on. Um, let Windows improve start and search results by tracking app launch, uh, launches. For me, that's a hell no. Uh, what they're thinking of right now is, you know, let's let's try to be generous to you know the boys in Redmond right now, is they might thinking, well, you know, Pete, he plays a lot of Candy Crush, and he you know you know plays Comic Base, and and he launches you know you know Microsoft Word a lot, and so maybe people want to sell him stuff that's along those lines. Honestly. Microsoft has no damn business knowing what apps you're using. So um, I just, I, I see no way in which this is going to improve my life rather than just give up privacy that, you know, is not your business. Uh, so that, again, that's a big hell no for me. Uh, and then also show me the suggested content in the settings app. Um, I, I also, in general, turn off all the things that show me suggested this, that, or the other thing, because the way they get, they suggest anything at all is they say, well, what's this guy been doing? And then they try to figure out what you might do next and try to pop things in front of you, uh, that show you ads that show you, um, you know, you know, best case settings and features that you won't want, but more or less everything, all this really comes down to is just targeting, uh, just targeting of, of your personal data. Um, uh, so in general, I let them know as little about the stuff as possible. Um, uh, and so I, I'm, I'm an uncheck on all those except for the languages. Um, because again, I, if you are going to give me weird, creepy things, I'd like to at least be able to read them. All right, so let's pop back here to the privacy and uh, let's look at one other big one that uh, most people don't think about, uh, which is, all right, so let, let's just, actually, I'm just go down the list for a minute. Find my device. All right, so if this was a laptop, I think there'd actually be an argument for leaving find my device on. What that is, is if this thing boots up, connects to a Wi-Fi network someplace, uh, this initiates a, a place where you could 
potentially look it up and, you know, see, oh, well, you know, my stolen laptop was last seen in Seattle. And so that might be useful to me and or the police. Uh, and so sure, you know, leave that on. This is right now a desktop. There's, it's never going anywhere. No one has a need to find my device. I, it's not moving anywhere, but whatever it is. So I'm, I'm going to turn that one off. All right, let's going down the list though. All right, uh, developer stuff. We're going to leave uh, that because it's kind of geeky. All right, let's look down at the Windows permissions under general. All right. Uh, so, uh, I'm sorry, we already hit this one. Apologize for that. Um, speech. All right. Uh, whether or not uh, you do speech recognition or not, you know, I, I, if you have disabilities or there's some reason you just really, really like you know, playing Star Trek with your thing, you're going to have to turn on speech recognition and in which case you're going to leave that on. It will be able to hit your microphone. It will be able to listen to certain things you say, kind of like your Alexa. Um, in general, I, I don't use those things that's on and off for me. Um, I don't really love the idea of, of this stuff, you know, watching me. The one that gets a little strange is inking and typing personalization. And this is one of the ones that comes up right in those initial, um, you know, default dialogues that you're all kind of screaming through right when you're, you know, um, <laughs> right, right when you um, uh, boot up your machine for the first time. So I, I just got distracted now by Brian going, you know, mi gustaria, mi, mi, mi publicada en español para, I'm not going to butcher Spanish anymore. So he's saying no distraction from my brain. Well, I'm, I'm glad for you, Brian. Um, <laughs> all right, by, by the way, a, a late hello to uh, Thomas B and Ed uh, joining us here as well. Um, they talk about personal inking and typing dictionary. All right, so what this is for is if you're going, if you've got some kind of tablet-based thing and you're going to be uh, using a stylus to um, command it around, they want to know what kind of words you're using a lot. You know, it, it can help improve the handwriting and the recognition and things like that. That's great, but it also means that if you turn this on, every single thing you type and every single thing you ink will be recorded and sent to Microsoft servers. That is a hell no for me. There is no benefit they can give me that you know, that justifies me letting everything I type go to Redmond, Washington. Uh, so yes, that's that's turning that one off for damn sure. Um, and like I say, it, it feels kind of innocent. Just, yeah, inking and typing, what, whatever, right? But no, that, that's actually kind of a big one. All right, and then lastly, we get down to diagnostics and feedback. Um, once upon a time, I felt very generous with people saying, look, hey, programming is hard. Wouldn't you like to be able to send anonymized crash data and things like that to the poor folks who are developing software? Um, you know, if you're feeling it, in theory, uh, this thing, if you, ex you know, are, you know, if, you know, we'll send certain data in theory anonymized, but again, remember anonymized is never really anonymized. Microsoft kind of knows who you are because they can put all these little things that they're tracking together and they can correlate with very, very strong possibility that this is actually not user X27J, you know, you know, it's, you know, from IP address, whatever. No, they pretty much at this point could tell, well, if it's not Pete, it's someone who, you know, clicks a lot of the same things Pete does, types a lot of the same things Pete does, you know, and so forth, they can get that just by correlating all the things they do know about you just from kind of watching your device tracking high days. Uh, I would tend to say, turn that stuff off. They don't need your data that badly. Honestly, there's enough other random people in the world who have left the default setting on that anything they got to debug, they can do it on the back of their uh, privacy data. So I would turn all this stuff off. I would turn off the tailored experiences. I would turn, you know, I would turn off the diagnostic data. I would turn it all off. And frankly, at the end, I would also click delete and remove it all from their systems. Um, you know, uh, Microsoft should know basically nothing about me uh, other than if, you know, if I'm buying things from them. So um, yeah, the, the rest, I would just kick it out of there. So anyway, that's the paranoid privacy type stuff. Let's get into the stuff that's a little bit more fun. Um, all right, so um, let's start with display. Uh, uh, so the display itself, uh, this guy right here, um, it's going to start up uh, and it's going to be set to whatever your your you know screen's native resolution is. Um, for all y'all out there in the world, um, please, um, oh, by the way, let me talk about how I got to display. Um, so you know how I normally just, I talk about, I click down here and I just type, start typing, you know, I say D-I-S-P-L-Y. I, I, I can definitely get there this way. Uh, but one way I, I get to this more usually is I just right click on the desktop and just go down to display settings because it's such a commonly used setting that they put it right front and center. All right. The important settings for display uh, when you get going uh, typically are scale 
in display resolution. Now, these are if if you leave them at the default, they're going to be the right thing for you ninety nine percent of the time for most of you folks out there. The thing I would like caution you about just a little bit. Number one, if you're having trouble reading anything, like if, if it just your eyes are getting old and you just can't keep up with it, then you know what? For for darn certain, bump the scale up until you can read things comfortably. If you you know you got to do what you got to do. Um, now, don't if you can, don't change the display resolution to get. I mean, you can always um, bump the display resolution down, and it will have the effect of making things bigger. But they'll also be less re, you know resy. Uh, they'll be kind of jaggy and a little bit you know, unclear. Uh, so if you have to scale type. And uh, and graphics up. Do it by the scale here. Don't do it by the resolution. All right. And then the last one, just on the tech support lines, we're probably as a feature of the next version of Compass going to try to move heaven and earth to somehow relay out and reformat our dialogues to deal with people who just have tiny laptops. Um, it's it's something we've had to have a kind of a rethink on because for years and years the trend was always screens got bigger and brighter and you know and, and better and so forth and then lap cheap laptops came along and the trend kind of reversed it kind of it stalled out on the high end people weren't getting massive massive screens anymore because I, I i would love a massive you know screen on everyone's desk uh because then I, we could show you so much stuff at once you'd really work fast uh it, you know having a bigger monitor in life really helps but a lot of people just, they like having their work on the go. And uh, even with the laptop space, the trend in, la in uh, laptops is, you know, for a long time was going from like 13 to 15 to 17 inch laptops. It's completely gone back the other way where people are realizing that big displays come with weight and a bulk factor that they often don't want. And so as a result, they're moving backward. Uh, and so displays are kind of stalling out. So we're going to see what we can do to uh, get that, uh, that uh, you know, some of these dialogues that are really squished to get them to fit on even very small laptops. I can't promise anything because, I mean, there's only so much we can do. I mean, we, we, you know, you're squishing a certain amount of data onto a screen, and we also don't want to make it so small that you can't read it. Um, but we are trying uh, because that is that is a real challenge. One thing I'd be doing is so pay attention to your display resolution there, and even if you're really squished on things, try to keep that second number above 800. If you can't, uh, we're going to talk about that when we talk about the taskbar, because it's the very next thing that we're going to get to. Uh, there's a couple things you can do to buy a few extra pixels, and that will that will help some. All right, so let's say I'm on one of these uh, screens that is, you know, it's it's laptop size. It's like you know, 1280 by 768 or something. All right. If so, Comic Base is going to fill your whole screen when you launch it, and some of these big dialogues are frankly going to bleed below your taskbar uh, in order to see what there are. You can get yourself, if you look at this taskbar down here, and you were to count pixels, you'll actually realize it's actually pretty, it's wasting a fair amount of space. And one thing you can do, let me go ahead and launch, just launch Comic Base so I can, you can see what I'm talking about. All right. Um, is if we had like let's go ahead and, and double click a uh, an item window right here now if i had my my monitor set to seven you know 768 uh, or uh pixels tall which again is it's it's below our you know the the spec we would suggest for copies but if i did these buttons at the bottom for the save cancel and remove would actually be stuck underneath your bar uh, and that's no fun for anybody one thing you can do buy yourself just a little bit extra space right click into an empty space on this taskbar and let's pull up taskbar settings all right so the taskbar has a number of things it, honestly we're, we're going to spend a little bit of time here so let's let's work with this but let's go uh, right now let's start with taskbar behaviors so if i click on that and we scroll down um there is a option here right now if you can click to automatically hide the taskbar if I do that, you see what just happened there is when I don't have Windows front, you know, uh, front and center, it goes and retracts the tax, the task bar, and it buys me all this extra space. And so you see that that's much more in the space you needed to display these buttons right here. So those buttons that would have been hidden before underneath there, just like that, suddenly when I'm in comic base, I can see them. So if you need some extra space, definitely consider that now it comes at a small price which is if i want to do something in windows i got to put my my i got to move my mouse down to the bottom of the screen in which case it, it will play peekaboo and, and pop back up here so if you don't need to do that 
you know, go ahead and, and don't turn on that behavior. But if you want just, it'll, you'll buy like an extra, I think it's almost like 40 pixels, you know, that, that can be a critical piece of difference. So think about it. All right. So I'm going to turn that one off for now, but you might want to have that on. All right. Uh, the very first thing I would typically do uh, though in Windows 11 is I go down to taskbar alignment. You see how it's over here in the center? And let's 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 talk about this little design decision because this is one of the big Windows 11 things that people did. Uh, one of the big changes they made along with curving all the corners of Windows and such. And it's, you know, my general feeling on it, it was kind of a retarded decision. Um, it was done largely because, you know, Apple had done it this way and there was a real, it really felt like there's a little bit of insecurity on, on the uh, UX staff over at Microsoft where I was like, well, Apple's cooler than us. Let's, let's do what Apple did. And so like, you know, if, if Windows, if Mac OS 10 is going to center their, uh, you know, uh, taskbar, we'll center ours, you know, for years and years, they'd done the more sensible thing where the, you know, the uh, Windows menu was always plugged flat left right over there. Um, so I, I think there's definitely some of that going on. I, at least I strongly suspect it. I don't have direct knowledge. But one thing I would definitely do uh, if it were me, oh, I'm sorry, I, I, my, my, as I thought about the problem a little bit more though, you see what they put in this place here is they stuck in essentially a ginormous, you know, if you're just slamming into the bottom left here, like you always would to use your start, what you're going to wind up instead of with is essentially a ginormous advertising center for Microsoft and related products and things like that. This suddenly became very, very high value real estate for Microsoft uh, because, uh, you know, they've got a million people that they can feature in news feeds. They can uh, uh, push ads to you. They push alerts to you. Uh, they'll tell you it's about the weather and things like that, but um, they basically bought themselves a prime set of real estate in your head by taking over this bottom left. Um, now, some people enjoy this. Some people love glancing down the bottom left and saying, oh, hey, it's sunny. Um, other people like me, it's like, if my mouse slides over here by accident and this happens, I have immediately lost my focus. I, I no longer remember what is you know, which way is up, what's going on. I'm going to wind up glancing at you know a couple, three articles. I'll probably get pulled entirely off task if I ever think, oh, Disney ends its fight with the Santa's over resort development. Let me read that story or whatever the hell is going on. Uh, or you know, hey, you know, it's like you know Toronto was up over you know you know over you know Torino was up over Monza. You know, whatever the thing is. It was not what I was planning on do right then, and and I'm just I'm off base. I would strongly suggest, from in most cases, if you're like me at all, take that taskbar alignment, move it from the center, and put it back to left, where it makes a hell of a lot more sense. Um, like I say, by making the start menu uh, go, uh, you know, the start menu right over here, because the center of every place you navigate on the entire computer is bottom left by slamming it to this point right here, it does some really nice things for you in terms of being able to move around your computer very fast. Particularly, I can drag my mouse from anywhere on the screen, hard down and hard left as much as I want. I'm not, I'm, I don't even need to look at Atari. All I need to do is grab to the bottom left and I will basically be right on top of this thing because it's pegged to the extreme measures of the whole thing. I don't need to search for it. As a result, everything becomes much faster. And also because my vision, I'm starting over here and I just kind of index to the right. Everything now is in a fixed place. I don't need to sort of locate a point of contact somewhere down here in the middle and then sort of start reading over to find anything. I can be like, oh yeah, copy. It's about this far over to the right from the bottom right. Uh, it's You can start learning your computer much better and I find things work much faster that way. But if you, anyway, if you, whether I've convinced you or not on that particular one, the way you'd get to that is you go right click into an empty spot go to taskbar settings, and then you go down to taskbar behaviors. Uh, for me on new computer, that is literally the very first thing I change is I move that back to the left. Um, other things around here, honestly, I don't mess with too much because they're not quite as critical. But uh, I will get into though uh, some of this other stuff right up top here. So let's talk about that search box. So the search box is this guy right over here. And as it turns out, it's completely useless. You don't need to take the space at all because remember how I was saying you can just click on the start menu over here and just start typing. You notice that they put a search right up here, which just appears right as I go. That search bar is literally one click away from you at any moment. You don't need to occupy your precious visual space here by having a persistent search box here. It saves you no time. 
um, just no, just click on the start menu and just start typing. So if I type settings, boom, yeah, we're, we're there. Um, so I would personally take the search box and just hide it entirely and look how much space I just got back. Uh, if you feel like, no, I, I like, I like having the visual reference there. I, you know, I'd like to have something just reminds me that's how I can go to search. Okay. So put it, so it's the search icon only. In which case you've got a little, you know, uh, uh, magnifying glass down here, and it's still all that visual clutter we had before. And just, I mean, look how much difference this is. You know, all that visual clutter just goes away. Um, so I personally would say consider just getting rid of it or reducing it to the icon only. All right, task view, interesting feature. It's this guy right down here, which lets you say, all right, I'm going to, you know separate my work into multiple desktops. If you are like a super multitasker, this may be relevant to you. I, I have a kind of a weird relationship with this one in that I've literally never, well, I've, I've used it as an, ex, you know, as an exploration just to say well, like, well, you know, when I'm working on a comic base, I'm in kind of one mode. When I'm doing email, I'm kind of in a different mode. And if I'm video editing, editing I'm in kind of a third mode. Maybe I could put all the things that relate to those different activities and different desktops and switch between them. Yeah, I've explored that way. I've never stuck with it. It's because the reality, at least for me, is I'm always switching between modes and uh, my my life doesn't segment quite so cleanly into spheres like that. Uh, so for instance, if email is up on one place, I may think about an email I need to send while I'm doing video editing. I may think about while I'm doing comic base. I may think about when I'm just you know watching video. I, I don't know. Um, so I, I have never personally used it, but I've, it doesn't take a lot of space on the whole thing. So I've never bothered to turn it off. That's me. Widgets. This is that darn, this is that thing right down here that wants to, again, if you ever happen to land on it, take all your concentration and throw it out the window. I mean, look how big and, and showy a, a display this is. And the, it's immediately going to grab all your attention. Whatever you're thinking of two seconds beforehand is gone. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to say, unless there's a widget that you love, unless you really enjoy looking, you know, at, at the, you know, at mail or, or I'm sorry, looking at the news or things like that in the middle of your workday, man, for me, this sucker stays off. And similarly, I do not chat with people over Microsoft chat. If I did, then, you know, then sure, go ahead and leave this guy on, but I do not. So this guy goes off. That's me. Uh, but anyway, hopefully I've showed you what these guys are all about and configure them as you want. One thing I'd say is a bit of a theme with all the Microsoft stuff is you're in a battle for your own attention. And for you to be able to use your computer effectively, you need to you know, be sitting there thinking, Hey, I want to do this right now and not have 87,000 things try to pull you off task. Um, it, it makes you feel like you're going out of your mind, but computers are very, very good at, at showing you bright, shiny, distracting, blinking objects that are going to want to get you, you know, again, off task. If I want to get any kind of work done, I got to minimize that stuff as much as possible, which takes me then to, um, the next thing that I would say is let's have a look at the notifications. All right, so I'm going to get to these. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm just going to minimize. Well, I'll leave copies up. So notifications are all the different things that are going to beep, blink at you, shine lights, have weird icons with numbers on them, all the things that are going to, uh, in, 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 depending on what's going on, they may take over this whole right side of your screen. They're saying, oh, no, look at me. Oh, no, you have to look at that. Uh, this is terrible, terrible stuff for getting anything done. Luckily, Thank God, Microsoft threw you a bone on this one. And if you look down here at the bottom right-hand corner, there's a thing down here which lets you do a thing called Focus Assist, which says, hey, you know, I can set up a time where between this hour and that hour, you just don't show me notifications at all or you mute them way the hell back. Uh, I'm going to say looking at your Focus Assist settings is a really, really good idea. Um, let me, I'm, I'm actually going to get to them yeah, the old fashioned way. I'm going to focus assist. All right. So what you can do with this, uh, was like right now, this is set to, it's only going to show me alarms. So like if I have a calendar appointment that's about to go off or things like that, it'll, it'll tell me about that kind of stuff, but everything else just gets pulled back and I can set this up so that it only happens during certain hours of the day. So for instance, I could say, all right, look, I want to automatically between, um, and let's go ahead and set this between say, um, uh, right now it's set between 11, and 7 AM. The only time my computer should ever blink at me is when it has something extremely important important to say. I would suggest don't, 
you know, if you have a work day that you want like getting things done on, um, start time of like, I don't know, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. You know, uh, it seems like a pretty good idea to me, uh, which is to say, you know, get in the work in the morning, deal with your email and then get on to whatever, you know, whatever job you're actually trying to do. Wow, I keep on saying these in reverse order. Um, so 10 a.m. to yes, a.m. <laughs> you joker. 10 a.m. Yes. Oh, boy. You, you are driving me crazy now. 5 p.m. Will you let me do that one? No, no. You're just you're just being jerks. All right. Anyway, play with this, guys, here. I, for some reason, I, I'm not using my mice right properly. Um, but you can uh, you can set this up so it, it repeats every day that it automatically goes into uh, a limited notification mode strongly suggest this. And by the way, uh, another pro tip is if you have Android phones, iPhones, anything else like that, one of the best things you can ever do for yourself is every time that thing bleeps at you, goes off, demands your attention, especially in the first week you've got the device, take a really, really hard-nosed look at it and say, man, did I need to know this right now? And if not, either mute the notification entirely, basically on all these devices, it's like click on it and do a long hold and then we'll give you the notification settings for that thing. But turn off as much of the godforsaken bleeping and booping of your of your tech devices as you possibly can. Otherwise, you'll just go out of your mind. It's or, or honestly, you'll just be like, you know, every, you know, Gen Z or in the world where like all you do is look at your phone all day. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's like because you can't have a, a you know a thought for more than about a second and a half without your phone beeping at you. Don't let your computer do it. Don't let your phone do it. Um, all right. Uh, next thing is let's right click down here on this taskbar again, and I'm going to do one last thing before we move on, uh, which is to say we can go down here and we can choose uh, taskbar corner overflow. Um, and basically, you can what that is is it's this little guy down here in the bottom right hand corner where there's certain icons, because you know we don't want to use all your space up here, even though we freed up a lot of space here by getting rid of all those you know, widgets we didn't need. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to, uh, there, there isn't all the space in the world for the, you know, for the things you might want to show here. And so by default, it doesn't show a lot of things it could show. And instead you get this little overflow icon, it's a little arrow pointing up. And that's typically where you'll see things like comic Base Sidekick or Dropbox or, or all the other things in your life. Um, you know, uh, so anyway, that is fine. You might, and I'm going to say might, want to take some of the things that are uh, applications that you like a lot uh, and allow them to be displayed in that um, in that area all the time. It's it's up to you. Um, you know, for instance, I tend to keep Sidekick showing all the time. Uh, it's useful for me, but then I I use Comic Base professionally. Um, but you know, other things like that. You know. Anything you turn on here, you notice as I put these on here, more and more icons appear on my bottom right-hand corner. So think about it. I'm not saying do anything in particular one way or another, but you can do it. All right. That's all I want to say about that for now. Let's move on to other things on the list. All right. Let's go back. Oh, um, uh, I'm going to move this down here so we can show our desktop again. And let me show you a couple of things that I find just as far as moving around your computer to be incredibly helpful. Uh, and one of them is, uh, I'm actually going to hide Comic Base entirely right now. One of the things is when you start out with kind of, uh, with your, um, uh, you know, with just a brand new copy of Windows, it's going to come looking something like this, right? It'll, it'll, they'll have stuck Microsoft Edge on there, whether you want it or not. It'll have your recycle bin up there, okay? And then, you know, applications that they install tend to put their icons on the desktop. I would suggest be brutal about controlling your desktop space. A clean desktop is a non-distracting desktop and just get rid of everything that doesn't help you. Um, and one place, you know, you can go to put them that, you know, keeps everything handy, but not in your way all the time is take things that you might want to use a lot, like the uh, Microsoft edge, you know, drag them down to the, um, and you can actually pin them to the, uh, the taskbar instead. So if I were to go down, they used to, it's funny, this is a stupid one. They used to make it so you could just drag them down there and they stay. They got rid of that for some reason. So now it shows you, you can't drag, drives me nuts. But anyway, one thing you can do is like, let's say I, I actually like edge, right? I can right click on this one and say, uh, well, it's, it thinks it is pinned to my taskbar. That's weird. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, 
Yeah, no, I just, it, yeah, hit, it, it, it was there and I just blew, missed it away. One, anyway, so if I ever want to launch Edge, it's right there, right? I don't need it any other place. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on it and just blow it away. I don't, you know, I, all I did is I blew away the shortcut there. I want to launch Edge. I click down there in my taskbar. It's always available for me, but it's not taking up any of my precious visual space right here. Same thing goes, honestly, with Counterbase. Counterbase doesn't need to live on your desktop. If you know, it, it's perfectly happy being down here in your taskbar. If you know, if you want to launch it that way or, or any other way, so feel free to just you know, you know, you know, blow it away from there and move it, uh, pin it to your taskbar instead. Uh, I'm just going to go find Counterbase. There we are, Counterbase 4K Archive Edition. I'm right clicking on him and I'm just saying pin to taskbar. Now he's already open, so he's showing right down there. But if he wasn't open, you wouldn't have seen an icon. But now that I've done that, I can actually click on him here. And just lose them, right? And look how lovely and clean this whole thing is. So I, if I launch this whole thing up, there's nothing there to get me off off track. I, I can just get my work done. Um, so definitely think about cleaning up anything that isn't helping right there. Things you use a lot, consider moving them down to the taskbar and then just losing the rest of it. All right. Um, now, with having cleared off all the space, I'm actually going to tell you there's a couple things that I would suggest you consider adding to your desktop, which weren't there before. Now, they used to be there in previous versions of Windows, but sometime around Windows 7 or 8, they got rid of these by default. And those are, you notice how, like, if I want to start from here and show my disk drives, or if I want to see my CD-ROM drivers, things like that, how would I do it? And the answer is obscure. Um, I mean, I could click down here, I could type, you know, show me, uh, you know, this, you know, computer, sometimes called this computer, this time, uh, sometimes it's called uh, this PC. So, uh, yeah, I could go, um, you know, um, what was it? Uh, why do you type this PC? <laughs> no, they changed the name of it th this way too. Um, anyway, I'll try this computer. Oh man, I, I, I literally don't know the magic words to get this one back on this one right now. Computer? Nah, not what I'm thinking. Anyway, but uh, um, but you could go down here to this folder thing, open up the file explorer, which then will take you here, which isn't where you want to go. It's showing you all your quick access folders, but at least it gives you a way that you can kind of move up and then, okay, here's the desktop and OneDrive and, oh, thank God, here's Dave, here's my computer, and now I could actually see my drives and other things like that. This is obscure. Um, this is this is just a weird way to go. Um, so what I would do instead is come back to the far superior design they had in ages past, where you just had your computer on your desktop, so you always had a home base you could get to in like two shakes of you know, just two clicks. The way you get there, and man, they've hidden this one pretty good, uh, is you click on Start, and you go to Themes, Themes and Related Settings. You're thinking, how is this related to a theme? Heck if I know. Uh, there used to be a you used to be you could look for desktop icons, but they've typically that it hasn't, you know, last couple of versions of Windows has not appeared recently. But if you go to themes, you'll see under related settings is desktop icon settings. Great, let's click on this. And then notice, by the way, the suspiciously old school looking dialogue right you're going here. This is literally is literally unchanged since about Windows 95. Uh, because they're trying to kind of submerge it. They're kind of hiding it in the thing. But go ahead, click on this one. I always put back my computer for sure. And because I work on a network with other computers and things like, you know, you know, network TVs and Xboxes and file shares and things like that, I also check net, uh, uh, network files. Uh, now, you don't need to, if, you're, if you don't have a lot of shared network resources, don't bother. Um, you, I'm going to say control panel, not really worth it anymore because uh, control panel is largely getting phased out these days. And also uh, everything is more easily just, you know, gotten to just by clicking on start and starting typing. And similarly, I don't feel a need to see my user's files, which is uh, which is to say your documents folder, uh, because it's once you've got any folder on your machine open, you literally the documents is one of the first things you can see. So I'm, I'm going to say the two that I tend to go back for are certainly your computer and maybe the network, maybe not if you don't have a bunch of network stuff, but I'm just going to apply right now. And then thank the Lord, there we have back all the usual stuff. Now, if you right click now and say sort by and say item type, then my computer, Dave, 
right here is going to pop up to where God wanted it in the upper left-hand corner. Now, notice, by the way, I'm fanatical about two spots on the entire screen. The bottom left-hand corner, where the start menu belongs, and the upper left-hand corner, where Dave belongs. Now, if you're a Mac guy, just reverse. That's the upper right-hand corner is where your computer belongs, but you understand what I'm talking about. All these things, by the way, if you put them there, again, anything that's in a corner is the fastest place to get to with your mouse because I can just zoom my mouse up there and it's going to always peg out right around where I'm going there. I don't need to hunt for it. And so this is the most important real estate for me. The reason I go and I put Dave up in the upper right, uh, upper left-hand corner here is because now I've got a home base for everything on my computer. All I got is double click on Dave. I can get to all my folders from there. I can get to my C drive. I can browse around. I can see all my devices. Here's all your, you know, your most common folders and so forth. And this is all just there waiting for me. It never moves. And it's, it's like just a really restful way to have all your work at your hand. Um, they got rid of it. I want to say around windows eight, they, you know, they started hiding this up there. I, I think they thought, well, it's, you know, people are too busy adding 73,000 files and folders all over their desktop. That'll just confuse them here. We can get rid of one, you know, one icon for them. Uh, but honest to God, this is an icon that has earned its space. I would strongly suggest putting in there because it just makes moving around your machine that much easier. All right. And then last thing I'm going to say uh, is, I'm sorry, let me yeah, switch back and scroll. <laughs> I've got my show notes over here. So I wanted to talk about the other things I want to do here. Okay, great. Um, all right. And the last thing I want to say while I'm out here on the desktop is about some of these view settings. All right. What do I, what do I mean by view settings? Whenever I open up a folder down here, right? In, and I'm looking at just anything. So here's the current base databases folder. Here's all the different things. And um, there's a few things on here that are, I'm going to say, are worth considering changing. Uh, one of them I'm going to say is a pure distraction thing. And and I, what I'm going to say, talking about is this little checkbox that appears every darn place that's active. You will also see that it appears up here uh, as I'm, you know, um, clicking on different things. Um, I'm just going to drag some things out to the desktop just so I can add more visual clutter to my life so you can see how hellish this is. So um, you see this little checkbox that appears up here? What that's for, and it's funny because it's on by default in Windows Home. It's not on by default in Windows Pro. It's one of the, the differences I've noticed between these two things is they figure if you're a home user, you probably haven't figured out that if I wanted to select all three of these things, I could just drag out around them and you'd never figure it out any other way. Uh, you'd never think that maybe I could, you know, control click to do them. Uh, you know, no, we, we better give you a checkbox because otherwise we'll just, you know, it'll be an unsolvable thing for you. Maybe it's because I'm old, uh, but I just, I find the whole thing, it's just visual noise and it, it makes me slightly stir crazy. The way to get rid of this, if you do not love the checkboxes, and I'm going to say I do not love the checkboxes at all, is pick any window at all. Um, just open up a folder. And you see over here, there's a view uh, icon. Click on this guy, and down where it says show, down at the very bottom, uncheck item checkboxes. And as soon as you do, suddenly all the noise around these things just went away. When I'm selecting on these things, all the noise of the checkbox went away and you're totally good to go. Um, but uh, I mean, I guess if you miss the checkboxes, just go under view, go down to show, and then turn back on the item checkboxes. If for some reason you miss them, um, I for one do not. Uh, now, one thing while, while we're down here, and this is geeky, I'm just going to say this is geeky. You may not care about this, uh, but I, you know, I'm going to say I do, uh, is you might want to turn on the file name extensions. The reason for this. So you notice if I do that, it shows you the little stuff at the end of the names of things, which tells you what type it really is. The reason I do this is because if, if you don't do this, what will happen is, is it takes the file name extensions, like in this case, you know, a um, .cbdb is a comic-based database. You probably know things like .txt is a text file or uh, .jpg uh, JPG is, a, is a, you know, a graphic file. Um, if you don't do those things, you're kind of at the mercy of whatever program is uh, typically dealing with these things to know what type of stuff you're really dealing with. And it can kind of jam you up. I mean, it's, it's uh, so for instance, Sometimes it really matters if you're dealing with a JPEG file or a, 
a PNG file um, or a text file or a PDF file or whatever else, and you'd really like to know it. But if you somehow have uh, one particular app, say Photoshop, set to handle all of them, they'll all just appear like Photoshop documents, and it's kind of weird. Um, anyway, I personally... Uh, tend to leave the the uh, the things on. Uh, one last bit, and this is maybe a little bit of paranoia, but it's been used enough times that I've, I've gotten you know paranoid about it. Uh, which is to say, if I don't show the extensions, like here, I'm going to I'm going to show them so you know what we're really dealing with. So these are all CBDB files. Uh, let me actually go ahead here. Let me let's see if I can find a rando picture. All right, so here. Uh, uh, did, do, do computers come with rando pictures? No, they apparently do not. All right, let me... Uh, okay, here, here's a rando picture. All right, so here is uh, Dave, cute minion, uh, naughty Dave, 40k, blah, 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 dot JPG. I could, if I wanted to, call this dot JPG dot, I don't know, TXT. Yeah, I, I could name it something completely different. And... If I change it that way and I didn't have uh, the show pictures set the way it was, it would appear to be the other kind of document. And so sometimes people, you know, give you things that, you know, appear to be uh, JPEG files, but they're really EXE files or things like that, you know, executables. Uh, I just, I don't like being surprised ever about what I'm clicking on. And so I tend to let this stuff, you know, be, um, I tend to always leave the, uh, the file name extension showing. So, uh, but you know, you know, do whatever makes sense to you. Um, but, uh, anyway, that is, that is one kind of geek factor that I do tend to leave, you know, where it was. You notice how, like when I clicked on this thing, now when this thing appears to be a text file, it's anything but, so if I double click on this, it's, it's not, you know, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a graphic. It's not, it's not going to open up a word processor. So yeah, I, I don't like being surprised is I guess what it all comes down to. All right. With all that said, um, all right, so we talked about that. So let's talk about, uh, and I guess we're running low on time. So uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of things to do for uh, for fun. Uh, and, oh, I'm sorry, we actually we already hit our fun type, which is say turn on the focus. Uh, thing. Okay, I'm going to talk about a couple of things that we're going to do for speed and a couple of things to do for fun. And then I think we'll maybe pick this up another day because uh, I think the geeky stuff we can hold off on for now. All right, so a um, couple of things. So for fun, um, first of all, uh, we saw a little picture of Dave right here. You, this is your computer. If you're like me, you use it for hours and hours per day. Make it mean something to you. I mean, you know, make it smile when you turn it on, you know, or just, you know, something warm. I do not get a warm feeling in the pit of my stomach when I look at whatever the hell this is supposed to be, the squishy, you know, I don't know, petal flower, whatever amorphous blob of Microsoft. Um, no, I, I, I get happy when I take a p favorite picture of mine and, you know, I, you know, I see that. So uh, my computer's named Dave. You know, these are my minion computers. So I have one called Bob, one called Dave. Take your family picture. Take a picture of your dog. Take, you know, you know what, of your wife. Whatever the thing is, find a nice picture. Right click on it. Say set as, as desktop background. You will, you will be happier. And so, you know, go ahead and just do that. And also, while you're at it, um, take a few moments and set up uh, a screen saver you like. So this thing is eventually going to time out. And you're going to want to uh, be able to, um, you know, you're, you're going to want to be able to, um, what, what am I trying to say? It's either going to go, go to black or it's going to go to some, something a little bit more interesting. I'm going to say, um, let's go ahead and find screensaver because apparently they've moved that one again. Find something that, again, is going to put a smile on your face. Now, right now, screensaver is set to nothing. You could make it go to, you know, bubbles, you know. There, there's a bunch of them that are built into thing. You know, yeah, you can do that. Um, but uh, I'll admit, for obvious reasons, the one I love the most of, of them all, if you have Comic Base Archive Edition, you got one called the Comic Base Cover Gallery. Go ahead and let's just look at that guy. And when my computer is timing off, I get to see lots and lots and lots of comic covers. And they, they alternate. You'll see new ones brought in as they go. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's... Life, you know, this makes me happy when I see lots of comics. And you can also have it, you know, show books, magazines, whatever else you have. But, uh, or even just, you know, have it show you your own collection in done in graphical format. But that's my screensaver. Consider it. All right. Um, that's fun stuff. Let's talk about a couple things for speed. And then I think we're probably about out of time. All right. So for speed, uh, when you got your computer, 
if you didn't get it straight from Microsoft, it probably came loaded up with a whole bunch of stuff that you didn't necessarily ask for. Um, uh, you know, you might have had everything from apps like Candy Crush or TikTok or whatever else. Um, definitely click over here under, under your Windows menu, go to Programs. And first thing you'll see down there is Add or Remove Programs. Go down the list and get rid of anything, anything at all that does not make sense in your life. Uh, some things you'll find Microsoft will not let you get rid of. Uh, like for instance, uh, I do not believe you're able to uninstall Microsoft Edge. Uh, whether you like their browser or don't like their browser, you're keeping it. You can have no choice on that one. But you can, you know, you say, hey, I don't like that news widget bumping up all the time. Lose it. Uh, you don't like the, um, uh, you know, Candy Crush. You don't like their uh, solitary game. Whatever the thing is, you know, their weather app lose it. I mean, you can always install the stuff again some other day, but in the meantime, get rid of, again, get rid of the visual cruft in your life. You're going to be happier. I'm not a Spotify guy. Go ahead and lose Spotify. I mean, you're not really doing this these days to save a lot of space on your hard disk. That's not really where it's where this, you know, the, the wind comes from. The wind comes from saving your own attention. Um, and so, yeah, go ahead and lose stuff like that. Um, you will also find out um, uh, the, the other thing I want to say about that is your machine may have come in built in with something like Norton antivirus, uh, McAfee. There's a bunch of other people uh, who have bundled in their antivirus stuff, you know, onto your machine. You'll see it running down here in the notifications area. It probably has half a dozen icons, which talk about how Norton antivirus 361 protection, whatever else is keeping you safe and, and doing stuff like that. Uh, here's where I'm going to make my most controversial uh, suggestion, but probably the biggest one in terms of making a real impact on your the speed of your computer, consider just getting rid of the damn things. Um, the, all right. I, I, and this is the part where everyone who's, you know, not a very experienced user says, well, well wait a minute. Well, what if I get a virus? Um, you know, I mean, this stuff was installed for a reason, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, in, it came pre-installed on your machine because the people who make the antivirus software paid to get it installed onto their machine because they know, uh, okay, so if, you know, we sell you an HP desktop at Costco, uh, you know, they'll pay a couple bucks to get their 30-day version of Norton Antivirus or McAfee, whatever, or somebody's Total Protect, whatever. They'll pay Microsoft a couple or HP a couple bucks to have their stuff rolled on in a 30-day demo mode because they think after 30 days, you will go ahead and pay for the ongoing subscription and then they'll have you for 30 bucks or 40 bucks for a lifetime. And there you go. Now, I'm not, as, you know, I'm kind of a libertarian dude. I'm not opposed to whatever deals people make. Uh, and, and it did, frankly, it made your computer, you know, a couple bucks cheaper than it would have been otherwise. The fact they bundled all this cruft onto it ahead of time. But the reality, and I'm saying this mostly just as a guy who has to do tech support on the other end of people whose machines are running slow. Unless you have bought a, you know, if let's say you bought kind of a marginal computer, like it's not the fastest in the world. You bought it because it's kind of cheap. It was maybe kind of like a, you couldn't afford a ton for the laptop, et cetera, whatever else. So it's not an absolute screamer. Most of the antivirus protection suite type stuff out there puts an enormous load on your computer in terms of just how much they are, you know, basically they want to get involved every time you open a file, every time you save a file, every time you think about launching something, they're constantly running all these check processes on stuff. And there's not a ton of motivation for them to be particularly fast about doing any of it. Now, um, what I typically tell people is if you're the kind of guy who clicks on everything that beeps on your computer and says, oh, click on me, your computer might have an alert. If you're the kind of guy who clicks on every unknown email sender, or whatever else, then nothing will save you. Um, I mean, they will engineer things that will trick you into launching the worst things on earth and you're, you're going to be in trouble. You just kind of need to learn some street sense of, you know, that, that you did not really get that settlement from the Nigerian prince. You did not really, you know, when you got the pop-up message because you mistyped, you know, Microsoft.com is Microsoft.com and suddenly you got an alert that says, your computer may be infected. Click here to run an antivirus check on it. You know, if, you know, if, because the fake site threw up a JavaScript alert, which will then announce after you've done it, oh yes, we found 87 infections on your computer. Click here to download our special antivirus software, which will clean them all up. No, that actually is the attack right there, is they're trying to get you to download the virus. Anyway, if you're the kind of guy who falls for this, nothing on earth will save you. Um, but if you're not the kind of guy who falls from this, 
the main thing you want out of your computer is for it to run right. And most of these big suites, the McAfee's, the Norton's, and whatever else, are just absolute resource hogs. I mean, they're really, really slow you down. So, um, and then count, you know, counter that is a number of years ago. And at this point, it's been 10, 15 years. Microsoft actually developed a very, very good uh, antivirus system of their own called uh, Windows Defender. And it's built in. It, it comes with, you know, comes with uh, Windows 11 or Windows 10 or Windows. I, mean, I think, honestly, it's come with everything since about Windows 7. Uh, it typically wins when they have virus shootouts to find all the bad stuff on your computer. It's typically the winner when when PC Magazine or something like that does a, a shootout of who found all the bad stuff. Um, and more importantly for at least us is it doesn't slow your machine down just to a crawl. Uh, it's built into Windows. It's free. It's not a resource mother. Um, I don't, you know, honestly, it's your business what you run on your machine and you may have special needs and things like that that it doesn't address. But I'm going to say, if your machine's not running great, if you're just feeling like everything just feels sluggish, consider, just consider, and I, and I got to say uninstalling. Because if you say shut it off, you will find out when you look in Task Manager that I said, oh, yeah, McAfee, yeah, go away for 20 minutes. You'll find out that it's running just as much stuff as it was running before you said shut it off. Um, it mutes down some messages, but it does almost nothing to actually shut down the processes. It's still exerting an enormous load on your machine. Literally go ahead and uninstall that stuff. Try running the Microsoft stuff. See if you're not happier. Uh, and if you are, you know, just stick with the other stuff. Uh, and honestly, and if you feel like, no, I really miss some of the stuff that my antivirus did for me, then go ahead and just install it again. But if you're having trouble with that, one of the best things you can ever do to just improve the speed of your machine is just uninstall whatever bundled crap antivirus, anti-security software was in the thing and use the built-in stuff in Windows instead. It's it's weird, but yeah, it's it's um, it's your business, you know, what you do, uh, but I'm going to say it's what we do in the office here. So anyway, that's that. All right. And then the last thing I want to say uh, for today, because I think we just kind of run it out, is uh, uh, do have one look at your power settings. And I say it's mostly for the people who are using laptops. Uh, there is a thing. So you're clicking here under start. And let's go to power. Uh, nope, not power. Oh, yeah, no, I had it down there. It's, it's not. And go down to edit power plan down here. Now, this right now is a desktop. And it's going to come built in that's going to be set to a, a power plan called balanced because Microsoft is very eco, very down with the whole, you know, they're, they're all here to save you from yourself and save the universe, whatever else, and cut the carbon and do things like that. I am a filthy capitalist who, where if I bought a computer that runs at a certain speed, I want every ounce of speed out of that damn thing because I paid for it. <laughs> you know, it's like, we'll save the environment when it matters to me. Now, on a laptop, it's a different story. On a, on a laptop, I care about running my battery down. Uh, and so I'm I'm more likely to be a little more forgiving about the power settings on that one. But when I'm running a desktop, no, I want a fast desktop. I want this thing to go as fast as it can possibly go. Uh, and so I'm going to, it's worth taking a little bit of time here and considering what your power settings are set to. Now, the default you're going to get here is, is balanced. Uh, it's going to say turn off the display every 10 minutes. If you find that's too fussy, yeah, make it 30. But I mean, there is a time when you will, will want to turn the thing off because if I go away for dinner and everything, I don't care if it turns my laptop thing off. Uh, and as far as putting a computer to sleep, you know, again, it's your business. You know, find something where it isn't going to jam you up too much. Uh, but the real fun down here is in the advanced power settings. Because it turns out, and you notice that all the really fun stuff is in these really old school dialogues. It looks like they've never updated for the modern era. Um, well, all right, there's a couple things before I even get to this one. Uh, if you go and uh, so you may see a, uh, a dialogue down here which says show other power plans. Because uh, you notice it didn't give me a, a choice of what power plan I'm on, it had just my, my plan is balanced. Uh, and so you may need to click a button down here on yours. It may say show other power plans. And if it does, then one of the ones it will show you is one called performance. If you have a, a desktop, that's your boy. That's the one you want to click on most of the time, probably. Uh, in this particular case, so this is set, this one is showing me the ones down here, but it's hiding it down here where I'm going to say, all right, let's get switch from balance to high performance. Now we're talking. And now I can do things like saying, well, 
when do you want to you know turn your hard disk down? So if it's if your hard disk isn't moving for a certain number of minutes, when does it, you know power it down? Um, there's a lot of things like that. There's a lot of things when it goes down. Um, the ones that matter a lot for laptops in particular is look down here at processor power management. And because what it'll do is your laptop is always trying to save energy and because it's trying to extend your battery life. But the, but the default plans that come with Microsoft tend to be pretty aggressive on that one. Where they'll say, okay, yeah, my minimum power state, you know, if I had the balance plan on would be something like 5%. Set that sucker up to, you know, set to 100, set to 50, set to something else. So don't allow it to idle down to the point where it's going to essentially, you know, until you start waking it up, you, you know, you lose all the power of your computer just because you haven't used it for a few minutes. Uh, and so when you do start using it, it just, it takes a while to cycle back up. Uh, no, go ahead and wrap those suckers up. Uh, processor power management, it'll get you just that little extra oomph, especially out of your laptop. Uh, and then one last thing I'd say on this one is have a look. This is geeky as hell, but look at your USB settings. So there's one here called USB selective suspend setting. And what that does is, uh, and somebody was saying, like, I'm using a scanner, and if I haven't used it for a while, even though I like to have it plugged in and just wave comics under it whenever, I have to wake it up first. What that's coming from is this setting right here, where what my computer is doing is it's saying, hey, if I haven't used a particular USB port in a while, go ahead and turn it off. Uh, so selective suspend it. So you go ahead and, and take that from enabled to disabled. And then if it's disabled, then your USB ports are going to be on all the time. So if there is a device you want to have on, like a webcam or things like that, where, where you never want to power down, yeah, consider moving that setting to the other one, and you might be in a better place for your usage. All right, well, with that said, I think we've kind of burned the, uh, the timeout on the whole thing. Uh, we'll maybe hit, uh, I got a lot more tips, but we may hit them another day. Uh, hope you enjoyed this one. If this was the sort of thing you like, please do hit the like and subscribe button. Um, it does help us out here and helps get the word around. Really appreciate everyone who showed up today. And thank you once again to our mods. Uh, guys, have a good one and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.